Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions about our obsessions Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dork down for a Hi, Jackie Cation here. You're listening to The Dork Forest. You know the websites, dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com. If you like a determiner, jackiecation.com has everything. Both of my podcasts, all of the stand-up stuff, the new album, links to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. But so, I think, does dorkforest.com, where you can look at old videos of different shows. Anyway, if you want to support the show... Tell people about the show, review it on iTunes, thumbs it up on Pandora or Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. I appreciate that. You can donate. You can donate monthly. PayPal lets you do that. You can also do my Venmo if you like. It's at Jackie Cation absolutely everywhere. And my email address is Jackie at JackieCation.com. And that's what the PayPal is. The PayPal link is on JackieCation.com and DorkForest.com. And go to any of them. Thanks for listening. There's merch. There's stand up there's tour guide you know you can find out where i'm touring this is getting long so let's get into the show hi uh jackie cation slightly ill lit in uh the dork forest in my garage with lacey artemis welcome to the show lacey artemis of artemis underscore creates and your podcast hat collecting.com which i swear to god lacey i thought it was going to be about hats I was like, why aren't we dorking out about hats? And then I looked at it and I was like, no, no, it is not about hats. It's a metaphor. It, <laughs> <laughs> it turns out someone has has an education. Well, good for you, <laughs> Lacey Artemis. Congratulations. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. So uh, Twitter and, and Instagram, it's Artemis underscore creates. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and then... Other places, it's ArtemisCreates.com yes. or Artemis. Yeah, easy enough to find. They'll all be in the notes. Mm-hmm. Um, listen to a podcast. Look at a creation. But here's, uh, I am slightly confused. Whenever a, someone wants to dork out about sports or music, um, I spend an hour playing catch up. And that's fine <laughs> uh, because it's it's super fun. But you, it seems to be the art the artistic angle of hockey yes essentially yes <laughs> well this is actually because i don't know anything about hockey i know that everyone can roll skate say, backwards yeah. but that's about <laughs> that's all i know i figured you're probably not so big into sports ball <laughs> <laughs> i uh i want all of your teams to win this much mm, we know yes. i hope it all works out for you and uh but what what okay so what's your team do you have a particular let's just do hockey in general for a second do you have a hockey team that you enjoy uh yes i have so the, the local team i'm in toronto so i do follow the toronto maple leafs uh okay. they're not always that good but i do follow them i understand um, that is wearing... not a, a pre- <laughs> I, I understand that it's not a prerequisite to love a team you're no, like it's not it's just yeah. geography it seems to be just yeah. geography <laughs> And so for the listeners who maybe are just listening and can't see, I'm currently wearing a purple and white Hockey Fights Cancer jersey, which has the Maple Leafs logo on it. Oh, what are their normal colors? uh, Blue and white. Blue and white. Okay, so that is a special... my brand is purple, so yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no reason to to, (laughs) to not... So blue and white is the team's color, and then they they did a special charity event and Uh, created that. So the cool thing is it was a league wide initiative. So I'm pretty sure every team in the whole league did purple jerseys one year. So oh, wow. I thought about, yeah, I thought about getting one of these for my second team, which is the Minnesota wild, actually. Okay. Uh, close to your hometown. Sure. Sure. It's, uh, <laughs> um, is there a team in Wisconsin? There used to I be don't the admirals. I believe so. There, there might be like a, like a minor league team, like, um, yeah. yeah, but I don't, there's not any NHL teams in there. I don't think. Fair enough. And uh, and so have you seen a lot of live hockey? I'll, we, we can get to the art in a second. I just need some basic uh, hockey talk. I have not been to an NHL game, but I have been to a minor league game. Oh, which is sometimes kind of better because you can get closer and you can see people uh, really being jet like athletic up close where you're like, holy smokes. Yeah. Hmm. Um, did you ever play hockey? I played roller hockey when I was a teenager. I was not very good. <laughs> <laughs> but did you enjoy it? 
Yes. <laughs> there you go. Now, okay, so we got the basics. Hockey, uh, hockey is a sport played on ice. Mm-hmm. Uh, two teams. You try to get the puck, puck in the opposite person's goal. Mm-hmm. And uh, and there is it sort of like soccer where there's uh, or, or uh, f- football f- football <laughs> in, in in parlance where people have zones that they play or is yes. it a big free for all? Oh, it's zones. Uh, yes, there is a neutral zone, which is the like middle third of the ice. And then there's the offensive and the defensive zone for each team. OK, yeah. uh, interesting. <laughs> so uh, the. Okay, so now that I have the basics of exactly what is happening in a hockey game, let us discuss the art. Hold forth. What to, what, what's your favorite thing about hockey? I think this is one of your favorite things, right? So, yeah, I as I was uh, saying in my initial email to you, um, the art was actually what like really hooked me into hockey as a kid. Like I did enjoy watching it for the action as well, but... Um, in particular, and anyone who's listening or watching this who is more familiar with hockey. So Trevor Kidd um, on the Calgary Flames at the time in the mid 90s uh, okay. had these pads that had this um, really like it was like a flamey design, but it was not just it's not what you would expect. It was kind of like a a yellowish orange or an orangish yellow and then like oh. kind of a deeper orange and just something about that particular color combination and the way it looked just caught my attention and i kind of upset yeah yeah and these are these are literally the pads that the hockey player trevor kid was wearing yeah on his knees and elbows or yeah i can i can put up a picture on the screen sure uh, let's put up a picture hold on a second here let me just uh, dig that Lacey up. Artemis learning how to use the sharing app uh, in Zoom. Yes. And so, if you um, all right. want to go to youtubecom slash the dork. Yes. Yeah, so you too will this. be able to see these images. So, oh, there we go. In. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can. So, yeah. So they're not exactly like pure yellow. There's like a orangish tint to them, I think. And the yeah. flames kind of looking like they're they're bubbling up from from the ice essentially which is kind of ironic in a sense that is kind um, of ironic. so so these are he could pick whatever he wants for the for, yeah. for the pads people could because you just have to wear the uniform like helmet and jersey and then you could do mm-hmm. whatever you want with the with the pads you can do almost anything that you want <laughs> oh yeah well I, yeah. I, i'm sure black lives matter some white supremacists would lose their shit so uh, uh, yeah but, well yeah. even even in simpler things because there was a goaltender in the 80s who wanted to put pepsi cans on his pads he had a sponsorship deal and oh, the league right. said no we're not gonna let that no happen. we're selling our own advertising please <laughs> uh to try not to sell advertising on your person yeah uh, yeah so you could do designs but you mm-hmm. can't do sort of logos and and stuff like that yeah the on the on the masks there's a bit more uh, freedom for that sort of thing and i can show some some pictures of that as well okay <laughs> um i gathered so- a ton of stuff and i'm realizing i'm probably not gonna get to show most of it just because of how long oh, it's there, is takes, a, but- <laughs> there is a and there is a time constraint so mm-hmm. um so what was there is this something that just sort of happened in the 90s where people were like i am going to put my fun thing on the pads because sort of like decorating your cubicle at a, in a workplace like you can yeah yeah the pads so another picture i can bring up for people who are completely uh, unversed <laughs> in this stuff um i feel like yeah so let me just do this real quick it's a real uh, clock eater this uh <laughs> so this is what pads used to look like they were just these like plain leather things stuffed with like horse hair i think it was and wow. Yeah, that is, that is an old timey looking pad, um, and yeah. they also look super used. But they are, yeah. but they are sort of yellowish as well. Yeah, and there's been a modern kind of re reimaginings of these because the way that they make pads is different now, and like that's a whole another topic for a whole another episode. <laughs> well, because of technology and the because prote- yeah. they're supposed to protect people from throwing a puck at them at a million yeah. miles an hour, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's how they used to look. And so mm-hmm. uh, goalies would wear those. And there's also the masks, which also used to be much more um, simplistic and basic. And jason Are they like a jason uh, kind of mask? They used to be back in the uh, 70s. And I do have a picture that I could share of that as well. Sure. I just have to Let's... go and 
dig that out. Sure. <laughs> like I said, I did far too much prep today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what I love about people who do homework to be on the dork forest, my job, just sit here and soak it up. Whoa. Yeah. So these are some examples. I'm not sure if they were all actually worn in the NHL, but I know some of them definitely have like real team logos on them. So, okay. but those are very Jason y looking masks. They sure are. And, <laughs> and so these are the, the masks. And this is all just goalie outfit, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Because okay. the players don't get to do anything fun like this. It's all the domain of the goaltenders. Oh, really? So the rest of the team, they're like, don't you don't have to sit in that one spot and try to block pucks you just wear the outfit that we gave you yeah but then okay. so i can show sort of the the evolution um just quickly of how that sort of it went from that to something kind of like this so okay oh yeah, yeah. Like the, just kind of a football helmet yeah with a, and with then a, it's cage. Got a cage yeah yeah and so i actually have uh well the next one i'll show you this uh this something a little a little fun fact yeah this uh this wire pattern on this um protective cage is called a cat eye cage because the front area there has those two kind of curved gaps that almost kind of look like cat eyes yeah so that's the most common uh style these days but there are some other uh styles as well that have come and gone those eye holes look big enough for a puck to go through i mean that would be they are just barely small enough, but um, there has been a couple of instances where a shot has been hard enough that it has gotten lodged in that hole and actually oh. enough got through to cause like a cut and the bleeding on the goal. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, it's a dangerous game is what <laughs> I'm hearing there. And so, yeah. so, and so, so here, yeah, so there's no showing. longer. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is kind of what they look like these days are very like airbrushed and like nice <laughs> shiny silver bars. That is, and... that is a van that, that is a, <laughs> if, if it's rocking, don't come and knock it. <laughs> that is very yes. much. It looks yeah. like a venom mask kind of. Uh, yeah, cheek. actually I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, yeah. And that's um, one of the things I got. I've got a folder that I call just classic designs because there's like there's a debate in the hockey world, especially amongst people who consider themselves goalie fans, because uh, we're we're the quirky ones. Goalies are the the weirdos in in hockey. Okay. <laughs> um, they're known for being very eccentric, and that's kind of I think part of how this all evolved. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, like kind of cleaner designs and simpler designs that a lot of people say that's what's best because it's not distracting it's not too busy but right. um i think they're a little bit more boring personally and i'm kind of i think in maybe the minority on that well and and it's interesting because the um the goal the the fact that there are just goalie fans they're just like this specific job right on the team because they they are kind of their own Mm -hmm. they're they're very unique and i wonder if like mm -hmm. there's goalie bars it's like no no we're just gonna go hang out with the other goalies and um but the um what are your favorite do you have color schemes that you like do you like it when they're because you like it when they're busy you said right i i do like the more artistic more detailed ones um so i guess i can show some of those um so very bring up it's a here. very video oriented go to youtube.com <laughs> i i i will try like i'm gonna try to to describe things uh a little bit because i i know how annoying it can be to try to listen to something <laughs> where they're like oh look at this look at this um, it's just like it's an audio format but yeah we do have the video and we use it so that's yeah cool. Okay, where did that go? I'm just trying to find. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is a pretty cool idea here. This one actually glows in the dark. Um, oh, that's interesting. Funky, yeah. So this Who's is a. This, it? this uh, belonged to a goalie named Ben Bishop when he played with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay. So it's kind of like a Tron-inspired design. So that's kind of nerdy in its own right. Yeah, yeah, and it's done with a uh, special kind of paint, so you can see in the on the right side of the frame that all these uh, it's got the team that the logo there is the team's lightning bolt logo, and then like a number thirty in Tron font at the bottom there because that's <laughs> uh, the number that he wore. And so okay. when it lights out, you've just got this kind of like glowing green lines, greenish lines there and yeah um because like when when the players first kind of come onto the ice before the game actually starts usually the lights are out for the most part and oh. so it's dim so that's how you can actually see this stuff 
oh that's really cool yeah then. yeah so yeah. he what he wanted is he wanted that to and and so the the current goalie mask that the goalies are using is that cage mask the sort of the to block yeah. but for a long time they did have that jason mask mm-hmm. which must be harder to see out of i mean for the game um those well those ones because they had little just like eye holes in them so yeah. like there was no obstruction at all it's kind of like wearing like a halloween mask with just big eye holes i would imagine yeah um, but it, but but i would think that there would be less the, that it would be harder to see out of just because when you do put a halloween mask on they are little they are not mm-hmm. the, like your peripheral vision can be screwed with, but a this cage, you could kind of work around sort of the helmet well, kind of part. The thing with it is, cause I, I actually do have, I, it's currently disassembled, but I do have a, a, a road hockey mask here. Um, okay. The cage is apart, and I had painted it all white. Cause I was actually going to attempt to do my own paint design oh, on this, yeah, but yeah. I haven't gotten to that yet. But um, the thing with this is, and like when I put it in front of my face now, because you have the two different eyes seeing slightly yeah. differently, so you can actually see the bars still. So right now when I'm looking forward, I can almost see like a little square right in the center of my vision from the right. overlap of each eye seeing those bars. So there's a little bit of visual obscuring still, but maybe not quite as much. Right. And, and, and I'm sure there's, you know, your, your eyes tend to compensate for that. And then all of a sudden you can sort of, you can see better through it. And yeah, and they're always going to want something to protect their face. Yeah. Cause there's <laughs> yes, a hockey puck absolutely. coming at you at 180 miles an hour or whatever. Uh, yep. So what, uh, so the one that you have, you've painted it white. Yeah. What, what do you think, what are you going to do? What are you thinking about? I haven't decided it's kind of like trying to pick tattoos like I have lots of different ideas and I just have to like pick something and go with it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I have to try to decide like what kind of paint I'm going to use because like that's uh I think that's acrylic paint on there and so I guess I'd have to use an acrylic paint on top of it as well and um there's still some spots that probably need a little bit more um primer but sure um I was thinking about doing something kind of the purple and white branding that I'm so fond of, but yeah. I haven't uh, fully decided yet. <laughs> uh, what, uh, how, uh, how are your art skills? I mean, c- could you, can you draw, like if you wanted to do a Prince themed one, he was into purple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm decent. I do more graphic design these days, but I did used to draw on everything when I was younger and I'm sure I could get that muscle memory back somewhat quickly. Yeah. And I wonder if, um, I mean, graphic design, you could do it on, on, in some sort of program and then superimpose it. I yeah. mean, you you could draw it on on the computer and then and then and then superimpose so it and trace it. It's yeah. funny that you mentioned that. Um, mm-hmm. Fun little fact here. So one of my cousins actually works for one of the companies that makes goalie equipment. Okay. So I, I went to her public Instagram just to make sure that I'm not going to get anybody in trouble. And let me and tell you something. A- There's no more Canadian words than my cousin works <laughs> at, a, at a goalie equipment company. <laughs> it's a very Canadian statement. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. So um, another quick screen share here. So um, yeah, she actually works in, uh, I think this, uh, well, this is an Adobe Acrobat, I think, but she works in like one of the design programs and she actually designs the pads for some of the goalies that are in the National Hockey League. Oh, cool. um, so this here, you're seeing Jonathan Quick and Cal Peterson, who both play for the Los Angeles Kings. Oh, there's an LA team. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah. There's actually three teams in California. <laughs> oh, wow. Of hockey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is, and this is the, the, the Kings used to have a uh, purple and gold color scheme. So this is now their retro kind of look. And uh, these were kind of design concepts that she created for those two goalies that would have been used at some point. What are the different, like the thing in the middle that looks like a sitting chart for uh, Delta? <laughs> what uh, is that just the shin guards? Oh, the, or, this. Uh, or, the, or no, yeah. that's just the side view. Okay. Yeah. 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 I can um, just give me a second here. I'll bring up another picture that uh, will make that uh, a little bit uh, easier for you there. No 
worries. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there we go. so she did so, exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. So so this thing I've there's a picture. I'm sorry, I realize I'm not uh, not describing things as much as I intended to. <laughs> um, I'm yeah, also so, talking over you, so feel free <laughs> feel free so, to push push your agenda, which I, right. I totally appreciate. So we're currently looking at a photo, a uh, back view uh, from behind of a goalie pad, and it's mostly white. And you can see the straps that go around the back of the goalie's leg, and then there's this kind of piece of like square foam kind of sticking out and I've circled it in the picture. And that's the piece that when the goalies uh, drop down, that's where their knee lands on that little pad there. Um, and I, there's a name for it, but I forget what it's actually called now. <laughs> a knee pad. I love it. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, yeah. Cause like there's, when I, when I was preparing for this, I realized like there's the mask art, there's the pad art, and there's even an art of the actual position, like the, the techniques and the um, positioning that they, they play so there's so much that i could show you and i'm i'm really realizing how well, just, limited just, i am in the time right right just well tell me what the tech what the you don't have to show me that just tell me what that is what is it uh the the pad parts you mean no the 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 art the of the of the way they're positioned right are you so are you gonna... talking about like if they you still okay you're still going to show me a picture go for it let's see it yeah it's it's just a little bit easier that way um, so this is basically a picture of something called the butterfly. That's what they've named the position. You can kind of see that it looks a bit butterfly shaped roughly. So you've got the goalie standing with the legs, um, kind of knees in the middle and the feet out at the sides. So creating a, a downward diagonal angle and then one glove up on one corner and one glove in the other corner. And it creates a loose butterfly shape there. Uh, and that's kind of the preferred modern technique because it allows them to more easily and quickly kind of get up and down and move around. Um, yeah, then you can see there's like a more a sim more simple design here on, on this equipment, but uh, yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, no, I'm just, I'm curious, why, why wouldn't you stand like that if you were gonna have to jump around? I mean, are there other ways that they stand? So quick little history lesson. Um, yes, I guess about 20, 30 years ago for, for a while, um, the most of the shots um, didn't come like they they didn't need to go down as much because the shots weren't like coming. I think they weren't coming as high as much. They were kind of more like along the ice. So um, the goalies did something called the stand up position where they would mostly just kind of like swat the pucks away and like kick at them and okay. they would only go down if they had to. Whereas now um, it's like the I think something like there's a, a high percentage of goals that are scored along the ice. So um, one of the goalies developed this, this position so that it would be easier to get down quickly and cover the ice so that those that reduce the chance of being scored on. Um, so it was so, a complete shift in how they played. So the game changed, which is what yeah. cr created that stance because previously yeah. they just stood there and they were like, jump, throw this type of <laughs> sort, sort of more like soccer, more like football. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that's interesting. Well, uh, so when they design their pads, I'm sure they're like, well, I'm going to be standing like that. How mm -hmm. could that, you know, maybe when my knees are together, it makes the sign of the cross and I all of a sudden am a Jesus hockey player. So, uh, <laughs> or whatever. Right? Yeah. And the, uh, the thing with like, I'll, I'll show another picture here to illustrate uh, some part of this. So, um, this picture is another picture of a pair of goalie pads from the side facing um, towards the goalie. And they have um, kind of diagonal green and like medium and dark green stripes and kind of like a forest pattern. It's a and landscape. So, yes. It's a, yes. Uh, and so when the goalies go down, depending on the way that the pattern on their pad is done, it can create like a, a secondary pattern um, right. when they're down. So it's, uh, there's like layers to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so it said Bauer on it. What whose pads were those? Do you remember? Uh, those ones I don't actually know. Um, that's not one of the ones from my cousin's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It's uh, yeah. yeah, but I I like that they that they're allowed to do it, right? That they can. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose I should maybe show some more of the mask art because I think there's a little bit more kind of going on there um i can actually yeah i can show some uh 
some of the so-called classic designs that, that people talk about. And yeah, um, yeah. so this one here, uh, this is a goalie named Ed Belfour. He's currently retired. I shouldn't say currently because I don't think he's going to be coming back, but he is retired. <laughs> he's come back in his 50s. He's uh, That's where it's all going to come together. Yeah, and I guess he earned the nickname Eddie the Eagle. So his mask here, uh, he's got an eagle painted on at both sides. And there's like a little wishbone type thing on the, on the chin area of oh, the mask. Yeah. Um, and so something that I was going to talk briefly about with the mask is that you can... Um, if you're just listening, you can kind of visualize if you're imagining wearing like a, a helmet that kind of goes not only on top of your head, but beside like around your ears and like kind of below your chin. So there's like sections of it. So there's different, you can have the, the design kind of like go up and over. You can have it go from one side, wrap around kind of the center. You can have it be asymmetrical. There's like all kinds of different options. So this one's a symmetrical design. Yeah. Um, here. This is another kind of symmetrical design. This is Martin Brodeur, who's like one of the most famous goalies in NHL history. Um, and he was playing for the Devils. So he's got a helmet that is black and uh, with a, like, red and white kind of accents. Um, so it looks a little bit like fire, but not quite. And a super... little bit like a crescent wrench. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> on, on top of it. It's uh, yeah. But it's like a devil's horn, I think, is what's happening on, on the top yeah. of his head. Yeah, that, that's uh, like a modified version of the team's logo. Yeah. Are any of these guys painting it themselves or are they just having it? Uh, I wonder if there's any sort of history of the helmet. Like, is there a book that if someone wanted oh, to yes. read it? I, I don't know <laughs> about a book, but there's definitely a history. And if you go searching on YouTube, you can certainly find that. All right. Um, but I just realized where... <laughs> history of decorating your know. hockey helmet uh i'm sure and i'm sure kids are psyched about it now where they're just like they're that they, as they come up they're just like i want to be the goalie so that i can paint a pokemon on my helmet <laughs> and and live my life entirely yeah. as a pokemon so another one i'll show here really quickly and i'll yeah. try to be good at describing it so there's a mask designer who does a lot of uh masks for a lot of goalies his name is well he goes by the the brand name i guess dave art and he's a controversial figure because he tends to do more detailed more artistic designs with the like neon or well yeah neon and like glow in the dark and stuff and okay. some people hate it and some people love it and i happen to like it but i can understand to some people, this is too busy. And so the design that we're looking at right now has a lighthouse and um, kind of like the light coming out of the lighthouse is like almost like a sunburst kind of pattern. Um, is Dave Art, do you, think, do you think he started as a graffiti artist? Because this has that kind of cool vibe to it. Um, he does a lot of different styles, but it's po quite possible that he has some some background in that. Yeah. Where um, so this is the Islanders Lighthouse of yeah. Long Island? Yeah. Uh yeah, they do play on uh, on Long Island, yeah. And um <clears throat> so there are sort of famous uh artists that you can that, that you can sort of hire for this job. Yeah, there are some some artists who uh, have gained a reputation. It's kind of like with um like with my cousin doing the designs, like they're uh, like, so I was saying in my email as well that there's a company called Brian's and they, they only do pads, but they do completely custom pad designs. So you can uh, ask them for basically anything and like the, the Pepsi cans, for example, and they can make it happen. Right. Whereas most of the other companies that make the pads, they, they have like, they come up with like standard patterns and then they can change the accent colors on those, on those patterns. And that's kind of the choices that you're allowed to make. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the extent of it. Um, yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> I know you never thought there was this much to, uh, to, to sports ball. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I mean, the, the um, do they usually go with the colors of the team or can they be anything that they want to be? Uh, they usually go with the colors of the team, but what happens when goalies get traded is that usually they can't get, new pads and the new team colors right away so if they're playing on a team with green colors and they get traded to a team with yellow colors then they still have oh. the green pads temporarily <laughs> oh that's interesting you would think it's a you would think it would be a bigger deal where you'd be like like the people who own the teams would be like 
please do not wear your Green Bay Packer uh, colors <laughs> while you're playing for the Chicago Bears or whatever the hell. And yeah. Uh, yeah. But so something I'll show you here to kind of illustrate a couple of points. So this is a picture of a goalie named Marc-Andre Fleury, a.k.a. his nickname is Flower. Uh, okay. And he's wearing gold pads here. So that's another thing. They can do them in kind of non-standard colors. Mm -hmm. And so you can actually see there's a bit of a like a like a gleam to them, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and, a little shiny. Yeah, and you can see, I'll, I'll try to zoom in a little bit here so that you can kind of see it better. So you see how there's kind of like lines kind of running along the surface of the pads? Yeah, yeah. So those are the the kind of the accents, so that he could, if he wanted to, he could get those made like black or white or red or whatever color. But you can also choose to just have them plain, so it's just the the base color of the the pad. It looks like they're like his mom made it, and they sewed <laughs> like they like they look like like you know like big sewing like the stitches where the stitches aren't too close. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so what would he, like, he could, he could do anything with those, right? Because he could, if he wanted to, like, put the names of all of his children on each yes. of the, on each shin pad or his nieces and nephews or whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to try and find one other one quickly here that I wanted to show. Here's Gordy, by the way, who desperately Hi, wanted <laughs> to sit on my lap because he knows that there might be a treat on this table. But uh, mm -hmm. he's just getting he's getting scratches. That's what he's getting mm -hmm. while you look for another. <laughs> oh, there we go. Look at this. Yeah. <gasps> so this is uh, this is actually like a, a re like a modern redo of, a, of an old design. So there's a goalie in the, the 90s and the 2000s named Sean Burke it was one of the first goalies, along with Trevor Kidd, to have the pads with like an actual pattern design style on them. OK, and so that he had like a whale tail pattern because he played for the whalers. Oh, that uh, makes they sense. don't exist anymore. But um, uh, more recently, the team, they moved to Carolina. And so sometimes the Carolina team now does like a throwback night where they'll dress like the Whalers, even though they're still Carolina. OK. And so one of their goalies um, got this uh, set of retro pads made. So for the people that are just listening, if you're still listening. Um, <laughs> Oh, so, they're still listening. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we've got the the pads here, and they're they're mostly green at the top, and then there's like a white wave kind of line and a and a whale tail, and then they're blue at the very bottom. So it kind of looks like a whale is just like dived into the water at the bottom of the pads. It does. Um, it does look yeah. like the whale has dived into the water. It's uh, yeah. that's kind of cool. It's um, yeah. and and it's not all. It's not all graffiti looking. It's it's real graphic no. designery kind of yeah. kind of vibe, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's the thing because like this does range. Actually, here I can show you a really great example of the uh, the mismatch of equipment. This is what I was looking for a second ago. Um, so here, <laughs> this goalie doesn't look very happy <laughs> right now. Um, but this is a he was traded from a team that wears red to a team that wears green, and so he's got these red blue and yellow pads with a green and black jersey <laughs> so yeah, yeah. all kinds of stuff going on here and, and a red uh, his, helmet yeah with a with a with a panther design on it from his old team <laughs> wow this is yeah. uh it's so interesting <laughs> that the league wouldn't be like no let's get him some new pads and stuff but i suppose at a certain point your your pads are comfortable right you've worn them in same with hmm. your helmet and you're just like you get me a new helmet I don't know if I'll play as well while I break in my helmet or when I yeah. break in my pads, it's going to, I, I, you don't want the pads to, even if they're the same brand, they got to bend around their bodies and stuff. Yeah. So something that uh, some goalies do is they have uh, like a game set of pads and a practice set of pads. So their practice pads will have all of the like puck marks on them, the black streaks and things. And then their game pads will be nice and clean and fresh looking and they kind of do that because they there's a theory in the goalie world. Uh, some goalies have kind of said, like, I don't think that really matters. But there's a theory that if their pads are completely white because the ice is also white, that it makes it harder for the shooters to tell where the pad ends and the empty space begins. So okay. it's kind of a deceptive technique for them. Whereas if you have very colored pads, it's very clear where the pad ends and the you know net that you're shooting at begins. Right, right. Yeah. It is, um, what are, like, the history of goalies? Like, what do you mm -hmm. know about the goalie situation? 
Uh, I, I don't know as much about the like super old history of, of hockey as I probably should. Um, I do know that there used to be an extra state, uh, an extra skater on the ice during games. There was five like skaters and then the goalie as opposed to, or six skaters in the goalie. And now there's only five skaters in the goalie and the goalies, uh, used to not wear masks at all. I know that much, but then they would, you know, get their faces broken by pucks. And so they're like, Oh, we should probably do something about that. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> um, and yeah, and they had the, the very primitive, just like leather pads and they would wear like a leather baseball glove before they had their own gloves that they got designed. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been, cause the NHL has been going for a little over a hundred years now. So it's been lots of time for, for evolution and, um, yeah, I'm just yeah. thinking if there's How any many other teams stuff there. there? There's currently 32 teams. They just, this year actually just added a new team. Um, called the Seattle Kraken, <laughs> named oh. after Sea Monster. <laughs> nice, and, yeah. Uh, which is good because they were just randomly just naming them after like whatever factory happened to be in town, or <laughs> or something like that, right? So yeah, good for them. Absolutely, yeah. Um, do you have any questions at this point? <laughs> any more questions? Yeah, I have a question, which is <laughs> sure. why what. <laughs> What do you, are, are there Reddit boards or are there, is, is there stuff that, what do you talk about with other goalie fans? Um, well, because there's like the, there's the, the mask art, there's the pad art, there's the, uh, there's like the saves that they make. Sometimes they make really flashy saves. And so there's like, oh, did you see this? This is robbery. This is the save of the year. Um, glove saves are a big thing. And there's a thing called the windmill glove save, which um, you can kind of imagine it's like they're just flailing their arm out and catching okay. the puck. Okay. So wait. Um, so th- like, there's, there's just, uh, there's talk of like the game it's like how they play the game. Yeah. Like the saves and stuff. So yeah, who, are your, who new- are your favorite? What what are your favorite saves that you've <laughs> that you have talked about? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've definitely grew up on the glove saves. That's kind of the the. The, the meat and potatoes of goalie saves. <laughs> um, and then there is the two pad stack, which is not so much a thing anymore um, because of the butterfly. What is, what is it does, that? It's not as, so I can actually show you what that is. <laughs> it's a two pad stack. Yes. So pardon me while I go get a stack of pads and throw it at the, <laughs> at the puck. No, that can't be right. Yeah. So I'll show you a classic. Um, do, 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 do. So this is a two pad stack. It's when they're basically laying on the ice on their side and they just have their legs kind of out in the air and they're just trying to like block the net. Okay. It's usually, it's a desperation save usually. Okay. Because yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of control there. You're just sort of hoping that your body is big enough to block the net. Yeah. Is what the deal is there. Are they wearing any pads underneath their, like their stomach? Uh, yes, they wear a chest protector that also it's like shoulders and chest and like some of their like abdomen, but I think there, there are some small gaps here and there that they can kind of get, but at least the major areas are protected from like somebody hitting them square on the chest. And then all of a sudden they've broken a sternum or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so you, you talk about sort of your favorite what are your favorite uh, things that goalies have done? Let's talk uh, about so, that. Yeah. Um, so there are uh, a few goalies who've actually scored goals, which is really hard to do because they're, so there's another fun fact. Goalies are not allowed to pa- cross center ice. And this is, um, there's a reason for this. I don't remember exactly why, but there's a video of a famous video of a goalie named Patrick Waugh, which is spelled R O Y. It's spelled Roy, but it's pronounced Waugh because it's French. Okay. Um, and there's a video of him skating to center ice and actually deking around a player, which is another thing goalies rarely do. What's what's deking? Oh, <laughs> yes. Now I'm starting to get into actual sports ball terms. <laughs> That's great. I, yeah, I need something because I because I've never heard of that. What is that? Uh, deking is, is just, uh, means just kind of like stick handling the puck to try and like avoid the other players so they can't get it. Okay. Or, so the, you know, the, the actual yeah. game itself where you're just like, we're, yeah. we're like in basketball, you would sort of 
it, it'd be the 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 dribbling the, kind the of the dribble. Yeah. yeah the, okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. called deking. So yeah. So this guy Patrick Ra. Wa. Wa. Like Wah. W. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick Wa. He actually leaves the net mm-hmm. and starts playing hockey <laughs> in the middle of the court. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I'm, I'm tired of staying at home. I want to have some fun. So he went out and went for a joy skate. <laughs> and then what happened? Oh, uh, yeah. He got a penalty because he's not allowed to do that. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a famous yeah. thing that he got a penalty. Yeah. Um, and I was saying with, with the scoring the goals, that's a thing that there's two ways that goalies can get credited with goals. They can actually shoot the puck and it goes into the net like directly or they can shoot it and it, it gets missed, but somebody else maybe like knocks it in like mm-hmm. the last player from the other, if a, if a player from the other team puts the puck in their own net, then the last person from the other team that touched it gets credit for that goal. Okay. So that's how goalies have gotten credit for a couple of goals. But if you look up, uh, I think the last time it happened was a few years ago, but uh, the goalie from the National Predators, I think, was the last goalie to score an actual goal off of his stick into the net. And it's always a thing that we celebrate because it doesn't happen very often. And it almost happened to the All-Star game uh, a few years back. Um, it's a goalie there that that's he's got one in the like regular season, but he tried to get it in the All-Star game. And that would have been like epic because that's never happened and it probably never will happen again <laughs> right right it's a um, uh, and they so have he, uh, goalie races at the all-star game too sometimes really so <laughs> yeah. the, it's the goalies just sk- like a skate off yeah they just they because they have fastest skater competitions with like the, the skaters but the goalies are wearing their full gear and they're just like they're hustling around the <laughs> around the ring <laughs> oh so it is absurd looking and yes, people are like it's... ah that's wacky and well, yes. good for them good for them it's uh w- so is there like is there you know with with famous people and sports people people are like well this is the best looking goalie in the league this is Mm -hmm. the best athlete all-around athlete are there is there some of that talk and who are those people there is talk about who the you know the the goats the greatest of all time uh, people who are playing or like you know some of the goalies that are still playing like are they going to make it to the hall of fame or not and um there's like with uh forwards and defensemen there's There's kind of up and coming goaltenders. There's guys that are established. There's veterans who are like, oh, are they going to retire soon? Or, you know, they're chasing a cup because they haven't won the championship yet. And they're, they're hoping to get one before they retire. Right. Um, There's a lot of names I could throw at you. I don't know if I should do that. (laughs) Well, if anybody's listening that loves hockey, they would like to hear it. Because I mean, that's what's happening is people are listening because they enjoy hockey. Right. And, yes. Right. And I will not be retaining any of these names, <laughs> but I will one day I'll be like, well, you know, Patrick Waugh. And then I'll just be sitting around having a having a beverage, an adult beverage in this case is my coffee. And I'll yeah. be at a party having a cup of coffee and I'll wow people, I'll wow people with my knowledge of goalie talk. And uh <laughs> Yeah, I should be like that time Patrick Waugh deked around Steve Eiserman at center ice and got a penalty. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, some of the names. Um there's uh there's a few guys that have retired recently that are that are pretty um popular. Well, there's a guy named Roberto Luongo, who everyone just calls Lou because he's got a good personality. Mm-hmm. And uh he played, I think, for only three teams in his career. He played a long time. He never quite got his cup, but he uh, he came close once or twice. And there's a guy named Henrik Lundqvist, who I believe just retired. Uh, he's another guy, came really close, but didn't quite get it. Um, and now he's just a little, little too old and calling it a day. There's a guy named Ben Bishop who just retired, unfortunately because of injuries, not because of uh, age necessarily. Um, he was another he was one of the best goalies in the, in the league for like, this is the thing with goalies. So goalies are kind of voodoo. They, um, you, if you hang out in hockey circles, you, you'll hear this before long. Goalies okay. are voodoo because they can be very hot and cold. They can have a season where they're the best in the league. And then in the next season, they might as well be in the minors because they're just, they can't stop a beach ball as the saying goes. <laughs> and 
uh, there's some goalies there have been jokes where it's like, okay, one season they're, they're, they can't beat them. The next season they're complete trash. And then the next season they're great again. And it just keeps alternating. Um, That's there's interesting a guy named that Dominic there's, oh, yeah. yeah, that there's, Sorry. that there's this <laughs> lack of this unevenness in the game where you would think yeah. it would be, you know, they would be good for the whole time. And, yeah. um, but, but so what do you think creates that, uh, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, because uh, goaltending is a very mental position. It's a very physical position, obviously, but it's a very mental position because if the goalie's head is not in, like, you're choosing to stand in front of being shot at 100 miles per hour, this, like, you know, vulcanized rubber, right. um, which is why I say goalies are a little bit weird because they're willing to do that and they, they it excites them. They're eager to do it. Right. Um, and so goalies really have to um, be focused because they have to they have to track the puck which is moving very very quickly all over the place it can deflect it can be screened um, and you know they can if they if they make just the slightest miscalculation in their movement they get scored on and that's not good right. so if they're like there's been times where if like a goalie's family member passes away or something that obviously that's going to be distracting and it'll affect them for like a season for the yeah. what that's interesting because it's like because in other sports they don't really talk about the emotions of the mm -hmm. catcher right yeah. or the emotions <laughs> of but you would think i mean that, that you know being a quarterback of american football right that should be mm -hmm. a that should be a mind game as well right Mm -hmm. but um but maybe it isn't maybe the goalie's mind game is super different just because of you're standing there as a human target to mm -hmm. something and yeah. um that is interesting and so, sometimes they do have to literally stand there for you know 10 15 minutes straight without really like not really facing many shots if their team's really good then they're not going to be having as much uh, shots at them so there's yeah. uh, another thing about uh, starting and backup goaltenders. That's another thing uh, in the goalie world um, because, because of the, um, the, the, the demands on the body of playing the position um, goalies can't really play like every game in the season anymore. Like they'll, how they'll many get, games are there? Uh, starting goalies typically play kind of like 50 to 65 games provided they don't, uh, <laughs> How many games are in a season? Is it like baseball? Uh, no, baseball is ridiculous. Hockey yeah. has 82 games in a season. What? It's still a lot. That's yeah. so many games. Yeah. And are they playing every other day? Sometimes. Wow. Sometimes uh, when whenever there's like back to back games, that's usually when the goal, the starter and the backup will split the games. But yeah. what I was going to say is that with the backup goalies, that's a thing that gets talked about, that they have to have a different mindset because they're seeing a lot less playing time. And they sometimes just have to get thrown in and they just have to be able to turn it on and play and be good. Whereas yeah. the starter is just always in there and always kind of in that groove. Yeah. Yeah, if because they're just they're just more used to it, and they're just, yeah, that is that's crazy. Is there a Wayne Gretzky level goalie? Like Wayne Gretzky is a name that is so famous that yeah. I, Jackie Cation, have heard of <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> so yeah, I I would say people. Uh, I think of the the modern era, sort of the last like 30 years, I would say Martin Brodeur is probably the closest. Um, yeah, he came Brodeur. up earlier. Um, yeah, he's got, uh, he's got a couple of records that are probably never going to be broken, like Wayne Gretzky. Really? Um, yeah. Record, like records and saves. Uh, so Martin Brodeur has won, I believe it's 694 regular season games, which is I think that's like a couple hundred higher or something like that than the next highest guy. What? Cause he, cause he, he was, he was, yeah, he, he played, he was kind of, uh, in, in a lot of sports, they'll say, you know, some people are just like, they're, they're kind of like aliens. They're like genetic freaks. So Martin Brodeur was a goalie who actually did play like 60 to 70 games a season pretty wow. regularly. Um, so that's kind of how he was able to amass a lot more uh, stats. And uh, so there's a thing called a shutout, which is when you don't allow any goals in a game. Okay. And Martin Brodeur did that 125 times in his career. <laughs> and the yeah. next, I, I don't have the numbers right in front of me because I wasn't no, prepared that's... to talk this yeah, stuff, yeah. but 
the next closest person I would say is probably like half that at most. And wow. goalies these days, just they don't play nearly as much. So it's very unlikely that those numbers are going to be reached by other goaltenders. Right. They've, they've essentially, they've decided that maybe Martin Berdura, whose body might be just a, a gelatinous <laughs> pile of goo at this point, um, just because he's been beaten to death, <laughs> because that's so many games. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what are the, like, the stats have got to be like how many shutouts you did, mm-hmm. how many games you played. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a I, thing called save percentage, which is another important. Oh, yeah. um, that is the way that you get that number is you divide the number of um, shots that you faced or the number. Yeah. The number of shots you faced and the number of them that you stopped. And that'll give you a number like, for instance, uh, 0.95, you know, 95%. So yeah. 95% of the shots you face, you stopped. The other 5% went in. Right. And uh, these days, uh, kind of the like average level of a decent goaltender, I think, is like about 0.91 or thereabouts. So they, they stop, can stop nin- 90% of the of the shots yeah. taken. They can. Yeah. Wow. And if you're if you're below that, then you're bad and you don't belong in the NHL. <laughs> right. Well, in the NHL, the scoring in hockey, is it one point per goal? Yes. So are they low scoring games? Like it'll be like, hey, it was four to five. It was a tight game and this type of thing or. Yeah, the, the games like we went through a thing called the dead puck era, which thankfully is over. <laughs> um, it, you can probably Thank guess God. what that is based on the name of it. Um it was a time when there was uh, a lot of clutching and grabbing, as it's called, uh, players uh, holding on to each other and lots of obstruction. And oh. so there was a lot less scoring opportunities. And the goalies also wore like ridiculous, like so much padding, like more than they do right now. And so, when the, as you said, the game changed. And so they had to change the rules so that you can't clutch and grab anymore. And they made the goalies shrink the pads. So oh. the scoring went back up. Okay. And so, yeah. yeah, that's something about hockey that's famous is that they're constantly beating each other up. Um, <laughs> right. Don't oh, they? there's been goalie fights too. <laughs> goalie fights. Well, how do you, yep. they're on opposite sides of the thing. How do they even get to each other? Uh, they leave their nets. Uh, and- if there's like a big line brawl, if like if both teams just like go at each other yeah. uh, or, or if one player is like, you know, roughing up the other team's goalie, then that goalie would be like, Hey, leave my, leave, leave my, you know, person alone or whatever. And yeah. Um, they'll, or yeah, something like that. And so are there famous goalie fights are there oh, yeah. duels <laughs> who's who, who, would, who has fought famously? Uh, I believe it was Patrick Waugh again. He's okay. uh, he's pretty, he's been in a few uh, famous uh, instances of goalie uh, history. Um, he got in a fight with, I believe it was either, um, Mike Vernon or Chris Osgood. It was a Detroit goalie, I'm pretty sure, because those okay. teams had a, a big rivalry for a few years. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's been there's been a few. There's a few goalies like that have reputations as being like a hothead. Mm-hmm. And so they'll um Jonathan Quick is one of those goalies. Um, he's also a goalie that's known for being incredibly acrobatic and making just like basically flinging his body around. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Uh, and his real name is Quick. Because it is that's very funny and if you um, saw the way that he moves it's not actually that uh, inaccurate <laughs> right right because he's playing himself around and so there's the goalies that um that get into fights do they ever get into like because they, do they if a goalie gets into a fight do they get put in that box where the there's no goalie uh, no, the goalies can't serve the penalty. Somebody that was on the ice at the time has to serve it for them. And it's not considered being on the ice, being in, being a goalie. Uh, it is, it but has- the goalie, the, the t- because the teams only get two goalies each, um, yeah. if both goalies ended up in the penalty box, they would have no one protecting their net and there has to be right. a goalie. So they this just take a- one of the skaters. <laughs> this is a free for all. Then the, then the goalies can act up. And then one of the, one of the. Do the do hockey players like the penalty box? Is it a place to get a breather? I would uh, think it can be. Um, it's it kind of depends, I guess, on, on the situation. Um, 
sometimes the if two players are kind of scuffling the referee will just give them both a penalty and say you both go and cool down for a bit but yeah um there have been instances and there's been pictures there's been video where if a game gets really really out of hand the penalty boxes will end up with like you know 10 players in each of them and they're like standing on like the the they're just like crowded in there and like sometimes they'll yell at each other through the glass and Wait, are they <laughs> the separated thing. in the penalty box or are they yeah, all there's just... two penalty boxes? There's two penalty boxes. But what yeah. if there's four people that need penalties? Uh, they're each penalty box is for one team or the other. So, oh, yeah. oh, so it's if the they same... put them in the penalty box together, they would just keep fighting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was like. Oh, well, then they're just going to beat each other up in a box. Yeah. Um, yeah. OK, so they're for each team. That makes much more sense. Thank you very much. But that but the the goalies can't do it. Mm-hmm. They, they can't be given a penalty box. They can be given a penalty probably where, where they're like, yeah. Oh, the, the other team, you acted up. The other team now gets a free kick or a free uh, shot at the other. At the- uh, yeah. They, they get a, they get a power play is what it's called. So basically you get a penalty and you play one player short for two minutes uh, okay. or, or longer. Um, there's a funny little phrase in hockey. They say, oh, you get two minute penalty for you can't do that. <laughs> uh-huh. And right, exactly. And But do they have that whole thing where they get to where it's just face off? Of, of, of a, a goalie and a, and a, and a hockey and a, and a person oh, like a, like a shootout a shoot or a penalty yeah. shot. Yeah. Yeah. Do they do yeah. that? Um, so that used to be more rare, but, um, how many years ago has it been now? They changed again. They're always changing some of the rules, but never the ones that we want to be changed. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, you're going to have to tell me what rule you would like to be changed. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I can get to that in a moment. Um, so uh, a few years back, they made a change. Uh, they changed the point system and they changed it so that the way that a game normally works in hockey is that they play three periods. And if the score is tied, they play an overtime. And then it used to be that if still the score is tied at the end of overtime, then you just, you were tied and that was just it. But they decided like, no, somebody has to win every game. So we'll do overtime. And if it's still tied, then we go to a shootout now. So it's a back and forth one shooter at a time. And the goalie has to try to stop them and whichever team, if it's, there's a little bit of like rules to it. I won't get into, but basically they, they settle ties ultimately with shootouts now, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but um, it's, it's a, a mixture in the, in the hockey community, uh, like and dislike. Interesting because um, with the ties, I think there's ties in soccer, right? Football. And, the, yeah. and then there's some sort of chart and it all becomes, you know, a, a series of, of, of math problems to figure out who's actually in the lead because of the number of ties you have and all these things. But um, that is, that is not how they're doing it now. Now they've just changed it to, let's just do a shootout. Whoever gets the first score, you know, like if, mm-hmm. if the first person to hit the shoot, if the first team makes that, and then the other team has a chance to make it up. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they go back and forth. So I think the way that it works is, if you're if like say let's say Toronto scores in the shootout and they're playing Minnesota because those are my two teams okay um, and then if Minnesota scores again then it basically like it's it's a wash and they kind of start over so I think you have to actually score twice and your opponent not match that to actually win that makes sense yeah, yeah. yeah. so we are at an hour uh, mm-hmm. so what I would love you to do is to tell me first of all what rule did you want to be changed let's do that. Yeah, there, there's a couple that kind of come to mind, and I'm, I'm probably I'm stealing someone else's idea here, but there's a thing in hockey called offside, uh, and there's a thing called icing, and they're similar uh, ideas. Uh, offside is when you you skate into the, the opponent's zone without the puck, like if it comes in afterwards, because you have right. to take it in with you. Um, and I've heard people suggest, like, just get rid of that. Just let them skate freely, because it'll create more interesting play situations and probably more goals um and then icing is when you um shoot the puck all the way down the ice uh and just like basically oh just just here you guys take it and it's because again you're supposed it's kind of like in basketball you're supposed to actually like take the ball with you where you're going you can't just like throw it to the other end of the court and then go get it so keep talking by the way the dog is panicking (laughs) 
Okay. Um, yeah. So icing is like, yeah, when you just throw the puck to the other, other end of the ice and then go get it. So you're not carrying it with you. And I've heard people say, and I, I would tend to agree that, um, yeah, if they got rid of icing, if they just made it that you could just like shoot the puck anywhere, anytime and just go get it. I think that would open up the game, it would make it even faster, which is hard to imagine because it's already a very fast game. Um, but there, I think, you know, some of the rules to do with goalies, I'd probably also change, but I don't want to get too deep into it. Well, what would it be? What would a, what would a goalie rule? So there's actually a rule and it's actually Martin Brodeur's fault. So he's mm-hmm. coming up again. It's called the Brodeur rule unofficially. And it's because he used to be so good at going out of the net and getting the puck and like, you know, being like a third defenseman, basically. He was so okay. good at stick handling and it, the, the league decided they didn't like it. And so they made a, a trapezoid shape behind the net. And that's the only place that goalies are allowed to play the puck aside from in their crease. So it really like limits what they're able to do. And it makes it, they're basically just like the save machine. And that's kind of it now. And right. I would like to see them given a bit more freedom again. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, you're like, Oh, well, he was really good at it. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. We're, we're going to make that against the law because he's actually quite good at that. Yeah, we're and, punishing you for being too good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, well, maybe everyone else gets a little bit better because it's interesting how the games do change, you know, with, um, mm-hmm was sort of, there is a game in Australia called um, Australian Football League, the AFL, right? And it's, Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a rugby sort of looking ball, but you have to dribble it. Oh, and, and you kick it and wherever somebody catches it, that's where it's been moved. And then you kick it in between the posts and there's four Mm -hmm. posts. There's two high ones and then two little ones on the outside of each of like one, one little one on the outside of each of the two main ones. And you get one amount of points if you kick it through the middle two, and Mm -hmm. then a different version if you kick it through a big one and a little one on either side. And um, there used to be this huge thing because when you catch the ball, nobody can touch you. Mm -hmm. So there used to be this huge thing where they would launch off of each other the, the, the people playing where someone would set their knee and the other guy in cleats, no doubt would run and they're wearing shorts would run, uh, and, and like, sort of like in wonder woman shield kind of situation where, um, they would, uh, step on that person's thigh and then launch themselves into the sky. They were called speckies because mm. they were spectacular catches. And, um, the the weird thing is is and the game wasn't quite so tackly and footbally as the dudes in the last 20 years have gotten more buff and like steroided out there's less and less of those jumps and that was the thing that i really liked about uh, australian rules football and it it's interesting that I'm talking about a sport ball, but there it is. But so do you think, cause hockey is obviously cha- has hockey changed physically? Like are the, are the hockey players bigger? Are they faster? Are they stronger? They're all of those things. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the game does change because uh, as new players come in, they'll, they'll invent new techniques or just different things will kind of happen. And the game like slowly evolves bit by bit and, Eventually, yeah, the rule makers have to kind of make new rules to, to kind of keep up. Yeah, to adjust with the with the fact that that these guys are is this does the skating change or is it just faster? Uh, I know that there are skating techniques because I've heard the term edge work said, uh, which I guess is about how you skate in a certain kind of situation. Uh, and there's definitely things I've heard about like more efficient skating styles and techniques. So um, yeah, that's uh, the, the main thing is that um, scorers are really kind of pushing the game ahead because they're finding new ways and different ways to score and, and beat the goalies. And so the goalies are having to come up with new techniques and new positioning to try and, you know, defend against that. Right. Because I'm sure they're like, Hey, nobody ever noticed they'll watch the films and they're like, they're not protecting the ice level, which is why that butterfly thing got it, got invented. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. And there was another thing, uh, another technique, uh, uh, if I can just quickly uh, do this, uh, explain this one. So there was a thing that they called the VH, which literally stands for vertical horizontal. It's a very uncreative name, but <laughs> it had to do with how the goalie would position themselves against the post when the player was like in the corner at the side of the net. And they did this, but then they found there was a weakness in it that the players discovered and they started to exploit it. And so they created the reverse VH, which literally just kind of means flipping their legs the opposite way. Um, and so it makes it, it protected against the original weakness, but it kind of also created a new weakness of its own. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, here's the thing about goalies. We could talk about them forever, but uh, mm -hmm. here we are at an hour. By the way, it's Lacey Artemis that I'm talking to, Rangers, and uh, you can go to hatcollecting.com. And hatcollecting.com is essentially people wear many hats in mm -hmm. their jobs and in their creative lives. And you ask the same questions of every guest to hear different answers because different people uh, have different answers to the same question. Is that correct? Yeah. So some of the answers end up being pretty similar, but I do, I really enjoy hearing the, the kind of unique takes to, to some of the questions for sure. That's awesome. And then uh, Artemis creates Artemis uh, as in Artemis uh, underscore <laughs> creates as in creates is, uh, is sort of your artistic angle is what, 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 what will people find at Artemis creates? So there they will find a lot of like design work that I've done. Uh, they will find a, I've published a short fiction young adult novel uh, last year. So there's Neat. that. Uh, there is music because I, you know, you can see a piano and a guitar behind me. I used to be, uh, I say used to because I'm not very active anymore, but I used to make music and uh, writing because I do, I do other, I do, I do everything. So right, that's right. why it's Artemis Creates and not just Artemis Musics or Artemis right. Writes. Because then you can do whatever you want. You're like, oh, I'm yeah. going to take up watercolor. And yeah. uh, right now, it's acrylic painting of a helmet of a goalie. And I I look forward to seeing the actual design when that comes out. That'd be awesome. Uh, thank you so much for doing the show, Lacey. Thank you for having me. All right. And Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?